Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and uh, become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Before we do get started, I do want to let you know that this program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. And you can support the show on an ongoing basis for with as little as $2 a month at Patreon.GreatDetectives.net. Uh, you can also support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net or by mailing in a donation. Well, now it's time for today's episode of The Avenger, the original air date, November the 1st, 1945, and the title is Rendezvous with Murder. <laughs> The Avenger. The road to crime ends in a trap that justice sets. Crime does not pay. Avenger's sworn enemy of evil is actually Jim Brandon, a famous biochemist. Through his numerous scientific experiments, Brandon has perfected two inventions to aid him in his crusade against crime as the Avenger. The telepathic indicator, by which he is able to pick up thought flashes, and the secret diffusion capsule, which cloaks him in the black light of invisibility. Brandon's assistant, the beautiful Fern Collier, is the only one who shares his secrets and knows that he is the man the underworld fears as the Avenger. And now... The Avenger and Rendezvous with Murder. There's a train coming, Bates. We'd better hide over there behind the bushes until it goes past. Oh, nobody will notice us, Tapper. It's nearly gone. I'm not taking any chances. Come on. You're okay. Yeah. Now we're out of sight here. Yeah, well, who's going to see us out here on this lonely road, I'd like to know. The brakeman or the engineer, maybe. How many years do you have to spend in the pen before you learn not to take any chances on witnesses? Oh, lay off that tavern, will you? We're out now, ain't we? Yeah, but I'm not forgetting them five years, Bates. And all because you bungle a small-time stick-up. Why, we could have pulled this Glenhurst bang job long ago if we hadn't landed in the jug. Fly low till the train goes past. Yeah. Okay, it's gone. Let's get out of here, Tapper. This, this place gives me the creeps. Yeah. I'd just as soon forget what happened to this crossing myself. Mm. Say, is this the spot where we planted that contractor on the track six years ago? Sure it is. Yeah, right down the road. There's a place where you and me jumped out of the car and sent it headlong into the 815. Yeah, that's right. Say, I recognize it now. Hey, what'd you come this way for, Tapper? 
I don't I don't like to think of that guy we bumped off. You know, murder's one rap you can't. Shut be. up. Nobody said it was murder, did they? The police said it was an accident, just like we planned. It was a pretty slick job all around. Well, maybe, but I still don't see why we had to park our car and come this way. I suppose you'd sooner go down Main Street so everybody could get a gander at us, huh? Oh, we're right here. Hmm? Turn turn this way, through these gates. Hey, Chaffer, what's the idea? That's a graveyard. Sure. And there ain't a better place for two guys to lay low for a couple of hours. Come on. Oh, I don't like this, Tapper. It's it's like... Well, like the coppers are always shooting off about. Returning to the scene of the crime. It's it's like we was trying to put a jinx on ourselves. Oh, damn that kind of gab. What's the matter, Bates? Are you turning yellow? No. Only I Come was just... Come on, th- then. We'll go over there under them trees and stretch out and have a smoke. Yeah. Well... How long we got to wait in this place? Well, it won't be safe to start working on the bank until close to midnight. I figure it shouldn't take us more than an hour to pull out that little section of wall, grab the swag, cover our tracks, and hit the road. Oh, here, here let's, let's sit down here. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, give me a light, will you, Bates? Yeah, here. Hey, hey look, look at that, will you? What now? That, that tombstone... Look what it says. Put your flashlight on it and, and stop blubbering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hold it steady, will you? Okay. In memory of Peter Moultrie. It's that contractor guy we bumped off. That was his name, Moultrie. P- Peter Moultrie. Hey, hey, yeah, that's him, all right. Well, I'm getting out of here. Stay where you are, Bates. This guy, Moultrie, has been dead and buried for almost six years. He can't hurt us. Yeah, but, Tapper, I tell you, this place is a jinx. Let's pull out, huh? Hey, you nuts. Sit down. We've got some plans to make. Yeah, but this job's got the finger on it, Tapper. I I can feel Shut it. Shut up and listen to me. There's a couple of hundred grand just waiting for us down there in the Glenhurst Bank. All we got to do is go in and take it. I know, Now, but here's the I... blueprint of the bank I snitched when we was helping build the place. Yeah. Yeah, hold, hold the light a little lower. All right. Uh, okay. Now, here's the section of the back wall we rigged. Plenty of room to crawl through. Yeah, but what if somebody hears us knocking the wall out? Not a chance. We fixed that section so it's as weak as putty. Now, this muffled hammer will loosen the bricks. Well, are you sure about the alarm, Tapper? Sure. Hey, remember how we looped the wires? Uh-huh. That'll keep the alarm dead within the limits I've marked here. Now... How about the vault? You got all that dope straight, Bates? Yeah, yeah, I can open that, all right. Now, we've got to be careful about fingerprints. Don't forget, we've got a record now, and they'll nab us pronto if we leave any calling cards. Uh-huh. I got all that. Okay. Now, after we put the dough in the car, we go back and patch up that hole in the wall. That's the part I don't like. I don't see why you want to do that, Tim. Because that'll give us a whole extra day to get away. That's why. Now, this is Saturday night. If nobody notices anything wrong with the wall... The stick-up won't be discovered until Monday morning. Yeah. I guess you're right at that. Now, now let's grab a couple hours' rest. We'll need it when we start driving. Here? Sure. This is the best place in the world to sleep. (laughs) Sweet dreams, pal. What's that? Hey, Tapper! Hey, Tapper! Take it easy, Bates. What, what's that? Oh, wait a minute. It's only a dog running down toward the freight yard. Oh. What time is it, Tapper? Uh, 10.30. It's time for us to start moving, huh? Bates, I've been thinking. There's just one thing that could trip us up on this job. What's that? It's a long shot, but it's the kind of long shot I don't like. Well, listen, Tapper. You can count me out if it ain't foolproof. I ain't gonna we do anything. We can make it foolproof, Bates. Uh, well, I, I don't get you. Well, when we was helping build that bank, we went under phony names and kept to ourselves. Yeah, we was careful, all right. You you wouldn't let me go no yeah, place. Yeah, but do you remember Moultrie's little girl coming around one day and taking pictures of all the men on the job? No, no, I don't remember that. Well, she did. Later, I got the negatives from her, but now I'm wondering if she might have kept them pictures. Well, what if she did? What's the difference? Plenty. The minute this stick-up's discovered and they get a gander at that pulled-out wall... The coppers will know was framed by somebody who helped build the place. <laughs> and then they'll start investigating all them guys, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but they'll be up a blind alley about us because of them phony names, huh? That's where the pictures figure in. 
That girl would turn them in and the police would match them up with two guys in the rogues gallery by the name of Tapper and Bates. Uh Oh, that sells it. Count me out. Nothing doing. You and me are going to pay a little visit to Miss Janice Moultrie. We've got to get them pictures. Oh, not me. You're not I... afraid to steal a few snapshots from a kid, are you? No, only... Well, look, Tapper, she she won't be a kid now. She'll, she'll be grown up. So what? Well, nothing, I guess. Well, when do we get started? In another ten minutes. Say, Tapper, what if that Moultrie girl gets in our way? And it's just going to be too bad for her. Because I'm not going to let any dame stand between me and that money. We'll get them pictures, Bate. If we have to plant that girl right down there beside her old man. Jim, it was sweet of you to drive all the way down here to Glenhurst to take Janice and me to the charity rally. Pure selfishness on my part, Fern. I miss you when you go away for weekends. Oh, that's nice. For a while, it looked as though both Janice and I were going to be stood up. Why? I thought Bill Cummings was going along. He called Janice half an hour ago. He has to work. Oh. Something about drawing up a will for a sick client. Oh, that's too bad. I was looking forward to seeing Bill again. Well, maybe after the rally. No, I can't. Inspector White's going to call me at my hotel at 11.30. I'll have to be there to get his call. We'll have to leave the rally early then. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. I bet you both starve. Oh, Fern is always starving, Janice. Tell me, did she have an appetite like that when she went to school? (laughs) Always. But how she managed to keep slim on it was what stymied the rest of us. I see where I'm in for a (laughs) ribbon. Jim, I'm awfully glad you could come. I wanted to talk to you about Dad. Your father? Yes, Janice still isn't convinced that it was an accident, Jim. No, I'm not, Jim. Oh, I know it was a long time ago, and... Everyone seems to have forgotten all about it except me. Well, it's natural for you to feel like that, Janice, but the police investigated the case thoroughly at the time, and there was no hint of foul play. I know all that, Jim, but I knew my father. He was a most careful driver, and it was never established what he was doing out there on that lonely road that night. Well, I'll recheck all the evidence tomorrow, if it'll make you feel any better, Janice. Thanks, Jim. Oh, hello, Bosco, old boy. Come here, boy. <laughs> Why, I believe old Bosco's glad to see me. Oh, Bosco, get down. No, no, it's all right, Janice. Come on, boy. Hiya, boy. Hiya, fella. We'd better go Come into on, dinner boy. now so we can get started for the rally. Don't bother getting out of the car, Jim. You'd better drive straight to the hotel to get the inspector's call. Yeah, it's uh, 11 o'clock now. After your call comes, Jim, why don't you pick up Bill at his office and both of you come back for a snack? Yes, do. Oh, that'll be fine. Now, let's see. Bill's office is on the second floor of the bank building, isn't it? That's right. We'll expect you in about an hour, then. Yeah, maybe less. So long. Bye, Jim. I wonder where Bosco is. He usually meets us at the gate. Oh, he's probably down at the freight yards. The men down there on the meat cars are always feeding him. Oh, oh they spoil him terribly. <laughs> now, where's my key? Oh, here it is. Oh, I'm glad you're here, Fern. I always dread coming into this house alone when Aunt Martha's away. What was that? Oh, Bosco must be here. Turn on the living room light, Fern. Bosco! Bosco, where are you? Stay right where you are, both of you. What do you want? What have you been doing in my house? We just dropped in to have a look at your picture album, Miss Moultrie. My picture album? Yeah, where is it? I won't tell you. No? Well, maybe this gun will make you change your mind. Now I remember you. I remember both of you. You worked for my father on the bank construction job six years ago. You've got a good memory, Miss Moultrie, and that's just too bad for you. Now, talk. Where's them pictures? I won't give them to you. Well, we'll see. Give her the arm treatment, Bates. I'll keep this other dame covered. All right, sister. Start singing and make it fast. We're in a hurry. Let me go. Come on. No. There you are. No, I won't tell. Oh, let her alone. Help! Oh, no, no. Shut up, you. Oh. Well, Miss Moultrie, are you going to talk, or does Bates have to break your arm? Oh, tell them, Janice. Don't let them hurt you like that. All right. Let go of my arm. 
I'll tell you. Be quick about it, then. The album's in a chest in that closet. Get it, Bates. Okay. I know what you're after now. You want those pictures I took of you. Smart girl. Too smart. Hey, you find it, Bates? Yeah, the album's here, all right. Well, hurry up. See if the pictures are in it. Yeah, well. Uh, here they are. Hey, they're good, too. Now, will you take them and get out of here? Uh, we'd be pretty dumb to do that, wouldn't we? No, you two dames are coming with us. Coming with you? Why? Security reasons. I've learned that the only good witness is a dead witness. You can't get away with a thing like this. You Bates, know you... go bring the car up in front of the house. We're all going for a little ride. <laughs> The Avenger and the Rendezvous with Murder. Why, this is the freight yard. Why have you brought us here? We're going to let you off easy. We're sending you two dames off on a little trip. What are you talking about? You'll see. Uh, pull up here, Tepper. Get out and open up one of them refrigerator cars, Bates. Sure. No. No, please, you're Come not going on. To... This is the end of the line. Get out. Fern, what can we do? Nothing. Get out, I said. And one peep out of either of you, and it'll be your last. How you doing, Bates? Over here, Tapper. These cars are packed and ready to go. I got one of the doors open, though. Okay. Throw the dames in. Okay, come on, Please, Susie. Please, not Get in there. I'd rather be sorry. Throw her inside, Bates. All yeah, right, Tepper. Now the other one. Come no. on, Bill. Come on, yeah. lift your feet up. Uh, Get in there. Uh, there we are. Now close the door and fix the lock. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's that. Come on, Bates. <laughs> Pounding, Janice. Maybe someone will hear us before the freight pulls out. I can't, Fern. My hands are getting numb. Oh, pound hard. It'll keep the circulation going. What's the use? We're doomed, Fern. We might as well face oh, it. Janice, don't give up, please. Listen. It's Bosco. Oh, yes. Call to him, Janice. Bosco. Bosco, it's Janice. Get help, Bosco. What do you Jim Brandon, Bill. Well, must have gone, I guess. Well, that's strange. Bill wouldn't leave his office unlocked. I'll just take a look. What's that hammering, I wonder? 
coming from below that back window. Ah, something very interesting going on down there. I wonder if Bill could have seen that. Better flash my light around here before I could... Bill! Somebody knocked him out cold. Now it looks as though this is another job for the Avenger. <laughs> beat on the other side of the street. Yeah, that Flatfoot better keep moving if he knows what's good for Shut him. up. Is he gone? Uh, yeah. He, he's just turning the corner now. Okay. We can get back to work. Right. Uh, I'm finished at this end. How about you, Bates? Well, just a little more. Okay. Did you check the wires, Tepper? Yeah. Uh, just like we left them six years ago. Okay. I'm ready. Good. Uh, crawl in. The vault's right inside on the left. Yeah, yeah, I know. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. At least... Oh, boy, oh, boy, what a setup. Uh-huh. This plan was foolproof. There's the vault, Bates. Get busy. Hey, uh, give me some light here, will you? Uh-huh. Yep. Gotta hand it to you, Tapper. This was a pretty sweet idea you dreamed up six years ago. <laughs> now you're willing to admit it was worth bumping off Moultrie for, huh? <laughs> sure was. You know, that door is as good as ours right now. What was that? You heard a funny noise. Yeah, so did I, but... but there can't be anybody in here. Can't there, Tapper? Who's there? It's the Avenger, Tapper. I'm here to settle an old score for Peter Moultrie. If somebody framed his temper. Let's blow No. Him. He's one against the two of us. We can take care of him. Grab that crowbar, Bates. I'll flash the light around. We'll find him. Yeah. There's nobody here, Tepper. He's gone. No, I'm still here, Bates, but you can't see me. The voice came from that corner. Start swinging, Bates. Oh, hey, somebody hit Keep me. Keep swinging, you fool. We've got him cornered. Well, I think I hit something, Tepper. Hey, give me the light. Yeah. Man. I don't see nothing. That's mighty funny. I hit somebody, but there's nobody here. You're nuts. He got away. That's what. Yeah. Come on, Bates. We got to take it on the lamp. The cops will be here in a minute. They won't get far. As soon as I set off this burglar alarm, I'll start after them. I'm giving her all she got. This jalopy ain't got wings, you know. Hey, hey, look, Tepper. There's a car following her. Huh? Hey, you're right. Hey, it must be that Avenger guy. I told you you didn't get him. I did. I hit him, but then he... Then he disappeared, I know. He scrammed, that's what he did. Hey, he's gaining on us. Give him a dose of lead, Bates. It's him or us now. Well, I'll try to hit his tires. Uh, did you get him? No, he's still coming. He's turned his headlights off. Try again. Hey, we're going too fast, Tapper. I can't get a bead on him. Hey. There's a railroad crossing up ahead and a freight's coming. Yeah. If we can beat that freight to the crossing, we can lose this guy. It'll be close, but it's our only chance. Sit tight. Hey. What's the matter with a car, Tapper? I don't know. The engine's missing. Sounds like we're out of gas. We can't make it, Tapper. Stop. We gotta make it. Hey, we're still on the track. Brakeman, Brakeman, over here. Bring a light. Well, if I ever saw anybody ask for what they got, those fellas did. Know who they were? Yeah, they just broke into the bank in Glenhurst. I saw them making a getaway and followed. Yeah. Well, they didn't get far. No, they certainly didn't. Say, that's Bosco. Come here, Bosco. We must Come have followed the freight all the way from the yard. Down, down, Bosco, down. What's the matter, boy? What is it? Oh, he's Come after now, scraps what? from that refrigerator car. I don't think so. I'm going to have a look. What is it, Bosco? What's the matter, boy? What are you trying to tell me? 
Somebody's in there. What's up? Somebody's inside that car, Brakeman. I heard a pounding on the door. I don't hear anything. Open up that car. I tell you, there's someone in there. Listen, bud, there can't be anybody in there. That's a sealed car. Sealed? Take a look at that door. That railroad seal's been broken. Yeah, you're right. Okay, mister, I'll open her up. Well, I'll be... It's Fern and Janice. Give me a hand, Brakeman. Sure. There, there, it's all right, Fern. You're safe now. Here, quick, help me get them out of here. They're almost frozen. Are you sure you feel well enough to drive home today, Fern? Yes, I'm all right now, Jim. Of course, I don't feel in the mood for any winter sports yet. Have another hot drink, Fern. Thank you, Janice. There's just one more thing I'm not quite clear on, Jim. And what's that, Janice? Why did those criminals try to get rid of Bill? I think Bill can get you straight on that. What happened, Bill? Well, I was hard at work in my office when I heard a strange hammering sound below the back window. I looked out and saw two men down below. But when I called down to find out what was going on, they just disappeared around the side of the building. I decided to go down and investigate. But before I had time to get out of the office, the two men came in. One of them turned off the light and covered me with a flashlight. The other one must have worked his way around behind me and hit me over the head. I see. Then when Jim came to call for you, he discovered what was going on. That's right. As soon as I saw what Tapper and Bates were up to... I went down and drained the gasoline out of their car and then followed them into the bank. I wanted to get a line on them, so I listened to them talking for a while before I did anything. What did you find out, Jim? Well, they were boasting about how they'd planned the robbery six years ago. Evidently, Janice's father discovered what they were doing, so they killed him and made it look like an accident. Mm -hmm. But if you were in the bank with them, Jim, how did they make a getaway in their car? Well, that hole in the wall left the bank wide open. I had to sound the alarm before I followed them. Anyway, I knew they couldn't get far with a gas tank that was practically empty. It really seems as though those two men had a rendezvous with justice at that crossing, doesn't it? Yes, it was another so-called perfect crime that backfired. Well, are you just trying to put it out of your mind now, Janice? Okay, Bill. Come on, I'll put a fresh dressing on your head. The doctor said to change it every hour. Yes, nursey. We'll be back in a minute. Take your time. Jim, one doesn't have to be a detective to figure out that we'll be coming to Glenhurst for a wedding very soon. It certainly looks that way, Fern. Jim, do you suppose that we could... Could, uh, what, Fern? Do you suppose that we could... Could have picked up all this on a telepathic indicator if we had stayed at home?
characters, names, places, and plots used in the Avenger program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a thought, a thought, a thought. Remember, listen for another adventure of... The Avenger. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site. We stream live OTR Westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, along with putting out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Wow. Quite a switch from last week. Last week, the Avenger was dealing with a mad scientist intent on taking over the world with his giant brain. This week, he's dealing with two kind of dim-witted robbers. A bit of a change of pace, I guess. Um, the, There are a couple things that really struck me. First, the robbers just took up so much space in the episode. Uh, I mean, I think they had like seven minutes straight that they were going at the beginning, which is kind of interminable for the setup. You don't even actually care that much about the uh, couple getting engaged because you barely spend any time with her. And the Avenger is you know, in some ways is not in this very much at all until right up at the end. And of course, the robbers make that classic villain mistake of thinking they have to kill somebody because they have um, a photo. When, of course, in reality, uh, nobody would think to check this photo uh, as some sort of clue. And... Um, the fact is that it's just, yeah, it's one of those things that comes up in mysteries that, in this case in particular, just doesn't make a lot of sense. Because if she would have thought of that, she would have thought of it, I think, in regards to the death of her father. And I also have to comment on the music. Organ music can be good. Uh, the orchestra or the organ score for The Adventures of Frank Rice, in my opinion, is exceptional. Uh, the score, however, which I, we haven't actually heard before, or the um, commercial inserts, sounds like it was taken from a record called Music to Run a Carousel By. All right, enough said on that. Now, listener comments and feedback. On the Avenger uh, first episode, Jones says, I was listening to the beginning of the show, and the first thing I thought of was The Shadow. The beginning is so much the same as that show. Uh, no wonder it was called A Poor Man's Shadow. It sounds like it's going to be an interesting series. Thanks, Joan. No, I definitely have to say I prepared The Shadows. Um, the Seed of Crime Bears Bitter Fruit over this week's one about the road of crime leading to a trap set by justice. And then we have uh, someone quite interesting listening to the podcast. Susan uh, comments, Lorene Tuttle was my father-in-law's cousin and gave me some voice coaching in the 70s and came to our wedding. What a doll. Well, thanks so much. Appreciate you listening there, Susan. And great to hear about uh, some of the stars in uh, real life. Of course, Lorene Tuttle has played a lot of roles, uh, minor roles in uh, programs we've done, but is best known for the role of Effie in The Adventures of Sam Spade. Uh, Stephen uh, comments, great podcast, Adam. I'm about six months behind, so lots to catch up on. Well, uh, 
Hope you enjoy this in just a few months. Thanks so much for listening. And uh, that will actually do it for today. If you do have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives.